So let's get into how we would actually model healthcare. So first what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple quick assumptions. The first one is that we are going to assume that people respond to incentives. Okay. Now incentives are a hallmark in economics. They're basically costs and benefits. If the cost of something goes up, you're going to do less of that thing. If the benefit of that thing goes up, then you're going to want to do more of it. Right? Incentives are basically the rules of the game, or they are what helps us determine our behavior. As economists like to say, incentives matter. We saw this in the concept of insurance. People responded to the incentive of having full and complete insurance by altering their behavior. For example, when I was playing with my Fitbit, I was less careful with it than I would have been because I had full and complete insurance covering any and all damages to it should any damages arise. We also see this in the context of football. So in the NFL, concussions are often one of the leading causes of injury, right? And this is because, actually, the helmet for the football player makes, basically makes their head much safer. So what ends up happening is NFL players end up using their head as a means of trying to tackle other people. Well, when you do that, you're going to have more concussions. Even if it's the case that the probability of getting a concussion in each incident is lower, there will be far more incidents than there were before, and this increase in the number of incidents will end up leading to an increase in the number of concussions. We see this with cars, seatbelts, and airbags. The average driver today, thanks to advancements in car safety, drives much more recklessly than the average driver in 1970 did. In 1970, your car was basically a rolling death trap. And so as a result, people drove very, very cautiously. Today, your car has crumple zones, airbags, seat belts, all kinds of measures designed to keep you safe in the event of a crash. However, what this also means is that getting in an accident is less costly to you. And so we do see empirically that people are driving much more uh, recklessly than they were previously. So we have these ideas that people respond to incentives. And the model that we're going to use basically says that the amount uh, consumed is determined uh, by the price. Okay? Now, many people will say that prices should not be used for healthcare, that everyone should have unlimited access to whatever resources or healthcare needs they have. Maybe that's true, but we can also say that we don't live in that world today, and we have to respond to prices. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build a real simple model based on price as one of the choosing variables or the uh, independent variables, and we will try to figure out if we can understand how much healthcare someone will wish to consume at various prices. Now, let's talk about modeling in general. What a model is, is it's a framework for organizing our thinking. Basically, a model allows us to take abstract facts about the world and put them together in a coherent way such that we can analyze and make predictions. Now, one thing that's often brought up in the context of modeling is that they are simplifications. And this idea is often used as a critique of the model itself, that it's overly simplistic and doesn't capture the nuance of the real world. Well, the purpose of a model is to take the world that is infinitely complex, especially in a context where we're dealing with people who have thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams, and emotions, and boil it down to as simple a thing as we possibly can. So the true mark of a model is not in how simplifying it is, but rather in the predictions and analyses that it generates. 
Okay? So the goal of any model is to simplify the world as much as it can be without making it too simple so that we can make reliable predictions and conduct actual analyses to understand what's going on. If the model incorporated quite literally everything, there'd be no hope that we could ever analyze anything because we'd be bogged down in far too many details to actually go through and understand anything. So the true mark of a good model doesn't mean that it has realistic assumptions about the world. It doesn't mean that it inc incorporates everything that we could possibly want to know. The true mark is whether or not the predictions it makes are accurate and the analyses that it, it allows us to do are coherent. If those two things are true, then the model is actually a good model.